What's faster, an old car running new tires or a new car running old tires? In this video sponsored by Continental, we're going to witness how impressive the technology leap has been in tires over just the past 10 to 15 years. Have modern engines, transmissions, and suspensions brought us into the era of bonkers performance numbers that we see today? Or by chance, could the majority of that performance bump be explained with just one thing, tires? To demonstrate this, we'll be pitting a 6th generation Volkswagen GTI against an 8th generation GTI. The catch? The 8th gen GTI will be running tire technology from the 6th gen GTI's era, and vice versa, with the 6th gen GTI running modern tires. And so that it's absolutely clear, both sets of tires are brand new, manufactured within several months of testing in this video. This test is demonstrating the difference in tire technology. I don't think anyone would be surprised to learn that an old dry rotted tire gets outperformed by a new one. That's not what we're comparing. Both vehicles are running the exact same tire size at recommended pressures, so things like tire width, wheel diameter, and aspect ratios are kept identical. Any performance difference is a direct result of the tire technology. To evaluate the difference between old tech and new, we're going to be looking at wet and dry lap times, as well as both wet and dry braking performance. But first, let's understand the variables we're working with. We've got the cars and the tires. Let's start with the tires. The Mark VI GTI is going to be running Continental's latest Extreme Contact Sport 02. This is an ultra high performance summer tire. It was first released in 2022 and it has a 340 tread wear rating. The Mark VIII GTI will be running Continental's Extreme Contact DW, also an ultra high performance summer tire which was initially released in 2009 and it also has a 340 tread wear rating. These tires sound similar because they're from the same lineup. The Sport 02 is two generations newer than the Extreme Contact DW. Surprisingly, Continental still makes the Extreme Contact DW, sold in certain markets, unchanged after all this time, which allows for this fascinating comparison. So we have a tire that's two generations newer on a car that's two generations older, as well as the reverse. What an incredible contrast. I'm stoked to see what happens. As for the cars, the Mark VIII GTI has the clear advantage. Not only is it more powerful, it also has significantly more torque. So at any point in the rev range, it's making about 16 to 32% more power. Newer tech means some added weight, but it only tips the scales at 5% heavier, so it has a clear power to weight advantage. And if that wasn't enough, the 8th gen will be equipped with Volkswagen's lightning fast DSG, their dual clutch transmission, while the 6th gen is rocking a manual transmission. So against the Mark VI GTI, the Mark VIII has better gear ratios, faster shifting, a better power to weight ratio, and a more advanced anti-lock braking system. Objectively, there's no reason for it to lose on track. Great, let's get to the testing. All of the testing was carried out at Continental's Contidrome Proving Grounds just north of Hanover, Germany, ensuring everything is carried out in a controlled environment for an apples to apples comparison. We'll make use of a wet handling course, a dry handling course, a wet braking track, and a personal favorite, flying around the high speed oval in order to access the dry braking track. To round it all out, we'll throw the Extreme Contact Sport 02s on the Mark A GTI so we can see exactly how much of the performance can be attributed to the car versus how much is attributed to the tires. Let's start with wet handling, as wet grip is something that modern tires have dramatically improved. The course we're testing on is a tight, twisty, 1.8 kilometer track that showcases a car's wet handling, or lack thereof, very easily. The course has a continuous, consistent level of water flowing on top of it. First out is the 8th gen GTI on the old tires. For consistency, one of Continental's highly experienced test drivers will be doing the AB comparison, as he has countless laps on this course and could probably drive it blindfolded. In the Mark VIII GTI on Extreme Contact DWs, he managed an 83.6 second time on the wet handling course. Okay, time for the Mark VI on Sport 02s. It managed the course in just 79.6 seconds, a full 4 seconds quicker than a newer car that has every mechanical advantage possible aside from tires. Driving them myself, honestly both tires felt solid, but you could notice the additional grip of the Sport 02s, especially on the front axle where you could have a higher steering limit before you noticed understeer. Just for contrast, and I won't name names, but we threw some brand new, cheap, 
or uh, wallet friendly summer tires on the Mark 8 GTI and it ran a 92.67 second lap. Driving these tires in the wet was scary in comparison, and the lap time shows how much worse they perform. Even still, I'm shocked how much two generations of a tire makes in wet handling. Four seconds is a massive gap. So what about dry handling? The course we timed was just a portion of the 3.8 kilometer track the Conti Drome has dedicated for handling. It features long, continuous radius corners so you can explore exactly what happens at a vehicle's grip limit and whether small steering inputs result in a rapid loss of grip or if it's a more controlled and stable drop-off. It's a really interesting circuit for evaluating handling behavior, but we're here for lap times, or in this case, segment times. Continental said that the advancements in tire technology in terms of the past 10 to 15 years is very prominent in wet conditions, but that dry condition advancements aren't quite as steep. And with more grip thanks to dry conditions, the Mark 8 GTI should be able to shine with its improved power to weight ratio since it won't be traction limited by a wet surface. The newer GTI managed a segment time of 54.4 seconds. To our surprise though, the Mark 6 GTI on newer tires was able to squeeze out a faster time at 53.93 seconds, or just under half a second. Not a crazy gap, but remember that's with worse gearing and less power. Tires beat horsepower. I gave both options a try, and honestly the overall grip felt quite similar, though to me the Sport 2 felt slightly sharper as well as more predictable once you started exceeding the tire's grip. It's tough to compare though, since the body control of the Mark 8 is so much flatter than the older GTI, which bounds about quite a bit as you change directions. Now, as an engineer at heart, I am always skeptical. I'm not here to doubt Continental's driver and his lap times. I genuinely believe he was giving it his best on every run. But as a viewer, you could easily say, well, how do I know this isn't the driver just going easy while he drives on the old tire and giving it everything he's got on the new tire? To dismiss this idea, we need objective data. This is why we also performed brake testing. And because any idiot can mash a brake pedal in a straight line, these tests were conducted by yours truly. So here's how the test works, starting with wet braking. The braking zone is a straight line covered in water. There are cones creating a narrow path within this braking zone, so that you're always braking on the same section of road. Water is continuously fed on the course at a constant rate, so you have a consistent level of water on the surface at all times. For the test, we're measuring the braking distance from 80 km per hour down to zero. To run the test, you accelerate the vehicle to above 85 km per hour, enter the splash zone, slam the brakes, and the GPS only starts measuring the distance traveled once you've hit 80 km per hour down to the time you stop moving. You do this a bunch of times, in our case we did this five times for each vehicle, and then you get an average stopping distance. Now, this test is reliant on anti-lock braking, which generally speaking will give you the best stopping distance. But we need to understand how it works to understand why the Mark 8 GTI has an advantage. So the ideal ABS system does two things. First, it allows your wheels to continuously rotate. Second, it allows you to stop as quickly as possible. So if you're to look at a graph of speed versus time, ideally you're going to have this linear deceleration where you just sit at your vehicle's peak grip for those tires and decelerate down to zero. In reality, at the individual wheel level, as you apply too much braking force to one wheel, it locks up, so its wheel speed starts to drop. You then release that brake pressure, the wheel speed goes back up, and you're hunting to find that peak grip as you decelerate down to zero miles per hour. So a modern system will make more adjustments per second, and it will also have a better job at finding that peak grip. They have better algorithms in newer cars for finding that peak grip. So in theory, newer cars should stop shorter even on the same tire than older cars because they have better ABS systems. So what were the results? Well, for the Mark 8 GTI with the old tire, the average stopping distance from five separate runs from 80 kilometers per hour to zero was 31.38 meters. For the old GTI on the latest gen tire, the average of five runs was 27.16 meters, more than a four meter gap, a huge difference. 
In order to get a better understanding of what these numbers mean, it's better to compare them in terms of g-forces. For example, I have one g pulling down on me right now, because I'm on planet Earth. Allegedly. With some simple math, you can translate the stopping distance into g-forces, and find that the old tire stop with an average of 0.8 g's, actually still reasonable in the wet, but the new tire stops at an average of 0.93 g's in the wet. That translates to over 15% more grip. Again, a massive difference. Very impressive. Now, for the ultra-skeptics, the vehicles were alternated after every run to accommodate for any changing conditions on the road surface. For example, if the tires are to leave behind any rubber, or slight weather differences. So the testing goes vehicle 1, vehicle 2, vehicle 1, vehicle 2, for a total of 10 runs, and these are the results. Okay, so what about dry braking? Again, Continental engineers were skeptical we'd see much of a difference, because tire technology has made greater strides in the wet than in the dry. But surprisingly, the results were clear. Since dry braking distances are shorter than wet braking distances, this test was conducted at higher speeds. And to my delight, it takes part on the Contidrome's high-speed oval. Something rather remarkable about this oval. At low speeds, as you're going around, the car naturally wants to turn left, down the slope. At really, really high speeds, you have to steer into the corner, as the car wants to drift up the embankment. But at a certain speed, this beautiful thing happens where absolutely no steering input is required from the driver, and you'll go around the corner with the steering wheel feeling like you're driving in a straight line. While I didn't film myself doing this out of self-preservation, you could theoretically take your hands off the wheel while driving around, and at the right speed, the car would track perfectly ahead. Anyways, I've gotten distracted. Since dry braking has shorter stopping distances, this testing was conducted at higher speeds. You bring the car up above 110 km per hour, and the GPS starts measuring stopping distance once you hit 100 km per hour down to zero. In our case, it started raining after we had completed two runs on each vehicle. So we're only averaging two braking tests on each, but for both cars the two runs were very consistent, so I'm confident in the numbers. The new GTI on Extreme Contact DWs had an average stopping distance of 38.14 meters from 100 km per hour to zero, while the old GTI on Extreme Contact Sport 02s stopped on average in just 34.89 meters. So more than a 3 meter gap, actually quite significant. In terms of g-forces, the DW manages an average of 1.03 g's, while the Sport 02 manages an average of 1.13 g's, translating to over 9% more dry grip. Again, that is a massive improvement. So now because we objectively know the new tire has more wet and dry grip, we can understand why the old car was faster on track, as more grip means higher cornering speeds, which results in faster lap times. Alright, we've got one more test scenario to run through, but I want to recap so far because this is pretty powerful. After just two new generations of developing a tire, Continental not only dramatically improved wet handling, dry handling, wet braking, and dry braking, but if you were to go from a Mark 6 GTI to a Mark 8 GTI, you can entirely offset that performance gain with tires alone. That is incredible, but I'm still not fully satisfied because now I want to know how much of the improvement can be attributed to the tire versus the car. I told Continental we're not done yet, we need to run more tests, and they obliged. So we took the 8th gen GTI and finally gave it the tires it deserves, the Sport 02s, and we ran it through the same wet and dry braking tests. We'll start with dry braking, where it managed to stop from 100 km per hour to zero in 33.84 meters, just over one full meter shorter than the Mark 6 GTI on the same tires, with an average braking g-force of 1.16 g's. So to put this in context, a two generations newer GTI and the advancements in braking systems within it were good for about a one meter difference in braking whereas two generations newer tires were good for over three meters in braking distance, with a worse braking vehicle. Okay, moving to wet braking, the results are similar. The Mark 8 GTI on Sport 02s manages 80 km per hour to zero in 25.2 meters, versus 27.2 meters with the old car on the same tires. 
So two meters from the newer ABS tech in the wet, but four meters shorter stopping distance with the modern tire using an older car. So for braking in both wet and dry, the tires made more of a difference than the vehicle. Also, if you do the math, that is 0.999 G's braking in the wet. This is a tire capable of 1 G braking in the rain. That is ridiculous. Moving on to dry handling, this actually does show the modern vehicle offers substantial performance benefits, going from 53.93 seconds in the Mark 6 down to 52.5 seconds in the Mark 8 over 1.4 seconds faster while using the same modern tire. But even still, the modern tire was enough of a performance jump to give the old GTI a faster time over the new GTI on old tires, overcoming the two generations of a performance deficit. Finally, we ran one last test, wet handling with the new tire on the new GTI. This was perhaps the most striking difference in all of the testing, as it ran the wet handling course in 79.2 seconds, just 4 tenths of a second faster than the 6th gen GTI on the same tires. So the performance gap on a wet handling course between the vehicles is just 0.4 seconds, while the performance gap from old to new tires with a worse vehicle is 4 full seconds. That's 10 times the time gap. Take a moment to appreciate this. After 10 to 15 years of technology improvements, with more power, a faster transmission, with better gearing, and it's good for just 0.4 seconds when you run the same tires on a twisty wet handling course. Yet the old car can run four full seconds faster than the new one by running 10 to 15 years newer tire technology. Tires really have carried us into the crazy performance numbers we're seeing out of modern cars. And the contrast is even more striking in the rain. You can have all the horsepower in the world, but if you don't have the grip, it doesn't matter. To me, this demonstration of swapping generations of cars and tires has been the most powerful illustration to show just how important tires really are. So a huge thanks to Continental at the request of a measly YouTuber for putting in all of the effort and resources to make this happen. And just one final comment on a personal note. Visiting and experiencing this facility has been a genuine highlight of my career on YouTube. Before quitting and becoming a professional whiteboarder about 10 years ago, I was actually a test engineer. When I arrived at the Contidrome in Germany, it brought me right back. I had a quick orientation and then Continental literally set me free to interact with the various test courses that the facility offered. They immediately trusted me to faff about in various vehicles, by myself, on various tracks, right alongside professional test engineers driving other vehicles, who were carrying out meaningful tests for both Continental as well as the major OEMs. These are my people, and it's an experience I won't soon forget. So again, a huge thank you to Continental for not only sponsoring this video, but for all of the effort and resources they put in helping create this video. The Extreme Contact Sport 02 is an awesome tire. I run it on my Model 3 Performance, as well as my GR Corolla, and it's super fun on both, rain or shine. You can find a link to the tire in the video description. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.